we will all have them, but these guys really made them count. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 famous last words. That's where it goes, one in, one out. For this list, we've collected the best, most profound, and most memorable last utterances before deaths ever documented. We've not included anything biblical, however. <laughs> And last words based on myths or legends do not qualify. Hit too brutally, then fall season. Number 10. One last drink, please. Jack Daniel. Charcoal mellow drop by drop for smooth sipping, the Tennessee way, which is not the easy way, but it was his way. Jack Daniel is so embedded in the history of American liquor, even his last words are related. The exact circumstances of Mr. Jack's death are contentious, but the majority of sources report that the great distiller died from infection, gained after kicking his safe as he couldn't remember its code. The infection spread from his toes through his body, and in his final minutes he presumably needed something to take the edge off the experience. For Jack, whiskey was a lifelong dedication and his dying wish. Jack Daniels, Tennessee Whiskey. Number nine, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. Marie Antoinette. Now you must bid farewell to your party and leave all of Austria behind. An Austrian archduchess who married into the French royal family, Marie Antoinette is a famous figure due partly to her supposedly extravagant lifestyle and partly to her bitter end. <laughs> a royal who lost significant favor with her public before her demise, the Austrian woman, as she came to be known, was an important character in the French Revolution. <laughs> After house arrest, an escape attempt, and imprisonment, it was finally her conviction of high treason that led to her death. Her contrite final words were not atonement for her supposed crime, however. They were an apology to the executioner for stepping on his foot. Number 8. They couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. John Sedgwick. Well known for the sad irony of his final comment, Civil War General John Sedgwick stated this phrase right before he was shot by a Confederate bullet. Moments before falling to his death, Sedgwick was documented to be questioning his men, asking them why they were flinching and ducking for cover during the Battle of Spotsylvania. Why are you dodging like this is what preceded his memorable last words. Somber as it is, Sedgwick answered his own question. Number 7. Damn it, don't you dare ask God to help me. Joan Crawford. Now look, Miller, don't go too far. One of these days I'll call your bluff. Oh no, you're not calling me, I'm calling you. Famous last words rarely get more badass or blasphemous than Joan Crawford's who remained defiant until the last. But you owe it to your public. The studio gets thousands of letters asking for more Joan Crawford movies. That's very gratifying, but I don't want to work. Reportedly spoken in response to a nearby maid who offered prayer at the actress's bedside, Crawford was not going to let religious faith infringe upon her final moments. Even though she identified as a Christian scientist later in life, the Golden Age icon was set on stepping into the great unknown entirely unaided and independent. And besides, what's one last curse between a woman and her maker? And as far as killing me, well, I don't think you're that good a shot. Number 6. Thomas Jefferson Still Survives John Adams the second president of the United States, John Adams' final words refer to the nation's third leader. Do they think that we will tire of independence? That our nation is uh, ephemeral? Adams and Thomas Jefferson were among the last surviving signatories of the Declaration of Independence when they both died exactly 50 years later on July 4th, 1826. You have a disconcerting lack of faith in your fellow man, Mr. A, and in yourself, if I may say. Yes, and you display a dangerous excess of faith in your fellow man, Mr. Jefferson. The pair had been political rivals through much of their lives, before mutual respect won out and they became friends in old age. 
Adam's final phrase was difficult to discern, but is often cited as Thomas Jefferson still survives. Thomas Jefferson survives. Unbeknownst to Adams, though, Jefferson hadn't survived him, as he had died earlier that day. Number five, let's cool it, brothers. Brothers, brothers, please, this is a house of peace. Malcolm X. Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? The exact phrase spoken by Malcolm X seconds before he was fatally shot varies from source to source, but his meaning is clear. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us, landed right on top of us. An extremely influential civil rights leader, Malcolm X was assassinated on February 21st, 1965, by the Nation of Islam movement, of which he had previously been a member. As I turned around quickly, and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. Killed shortly after his own Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca, he had exhaustively rallied for equality throughout his life, but sadly was still calling for peace at the moment of his death. <laughs> Number four, I know you are here to kill me. Shoot, coward, you are only going to kill a man. Ernesto Che Guevara. Patria o muerte. A leader of the revolution until his last breath. When Che Guevara came face to face with his executioner, he understood that despite his own imminent death, his ideas would survive. The socialist icon was captured by U.S.-backed Bolivian forces on October 8, 1967, before being held overnight and shot the next day. And then Tehran finished him off with another burst, something like nine bullets that entered his body. Mario Tehran, who had lost three friends in a fight with Guevara's forces, volunteered to carry out his execution. Don't shoot from here up, shoot from here down, because he's supposed to die from combat wounds. Just before Tehran fired, Guevara parted with a reminder that a man's principles do not necessarily die with the man himself. Shoot, coward, you're only going to kill a man. In other words, you're not going to kill my ideas. Number three, of course I know who you are. You're my girl. I love you. John Wayne. An undisputed American icon, John Wayne's final words are perhaps the most touching of all in today's top ten. Now, Catherine, are you going to believe what you see or what I tell you? The model of masculinity, he succumbed to stomach cancer in June 1979, but not before leaving his daughter Aisa with a heartfelt final message. Well, baby sister, you better try and get some sleep. Wayne's condition had deteriorated during the days leading up to his death, and he'd been slipping in and out of consciousness. The desperate situation caused Aisa to ask, do you know who I am? Wayne's answer was beautifully simple and simply beautiful. Well, another day, and let's hope another dollar. Number two, last words are for fools who haven't said enough, Karl Marx. One of the most important and influential people of the 19th century, if not human history, Karl Marx certainly spoke and wrote more powerfully than most during his lifetime. The author of The Communist Manifesto and Das Kapital, Marx's theories and thinking had a profound influence on modern political, economic, and social thought. Marx believed that the pumping out of surplus from the workers' labor power gave capitalism its revolutionary force. His final words were Joan Crawford-like, in that they were spoken in frustration at his housekeeper. When pressed for his final thoughts, Marx clearly felt as though he'd already said enough and it's difficult to disagree. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, I'm bored with it all. Winston Churchill. And for the good of all, walk together in majesty, in justice, and in peace. The Prime Minister of Great Britain during World War II, Winston Churchill is most famous for his rousing speeches and never give up philosophy. Violent and dire events will open. If so, 
we shall confront them with fortitude. That makes his final words all the more potent. The wartime leader reportedly relayed his boredom shortly before slipping into a stroke-induced unconsciousness from which he would never wake. Churchill died aged 90, but had already offered his thoughts on death 15 years previous. I am ready to meet my maker, he'd said. Whether my maker is prepared for the ordeal of meeting me is another matter. Clearly, death did not worry Winston. Life in our lifetime has the long arm of fate reached out across the oceans to bring the United States into the forefront of the battle. Do you agree with our list? Whose last words did we miss? What's Spanish for breakfast? For more unforgettable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, I'd rather say that uh, in the States, there's a law that has recently been passed or a decision handed down by the court wherein if you call someone an Uncle Tom, they can sue you for libel. Thank <laughs> you.